Short answer, MS Zealandia, built 1911, maiden voyage 1912. Now in the strictest sense, Zealandia was not the first ship with a diesel engine. It was not even the first ocean-going engine ship, as it was preceded by two years by the Dutch tanker Vulcanus. It was, however, the first truly large and advanced engine ship that matched the large steamers of the time. For the time, Zealandia was an extremely advanced ship that made quite a stir on its maiden voyage, as it had no smokestack and its exhaust was hidden in the mizzen mast. This gave it the nickname of Phantom Ship because people were used to the huge columns of smoke from the steamships. Zealandia was the first in a series of free ships ordered by Danish East, East Asiatic Company for use on the route Copenhagen, Genoa, Bangkok. It was the founder of East Asiatic Company, Hoen Andersen, who ordered the ship from the wharf Burmeister and Wayne, and the marine diesel engineer Ivar Knussen led the development of the ship. The ship was 6,800 deadweight ton, had a length of 370 feet or 113 meters, and a beam of 53 feet or 16.2 meters. It had twin screws and could go at 12 knots, which was slower than many sailing ships of the day, but as is the case with modern ship speed is not all. It is about keeping a schedule. The engine was what truly set Zealandia apart. Burmeister and Wayne in Copenhagen was at the forefront of diesel engine development and their engines would soon be adapted in many places. The engine of Zealandia was actually two engines. Two times eight cylinder, four cycle, 1250 horsepower diesel engines. Aside from not having the smoke columns of the steamships, the diesel engines had other advantages. Marine fuel oil has a higher energy density by both weight and volume than coal, so Zealandia could sail further with less space and weight being taken up by fuel. Not only that, the diesel engines were also smaller than steam engines with the same power. Add to that that diesel engines do not need fresh water for a boiler since it is an internal combustion engine and it becomes clear why diesel engines won out over steam engines in marine propulsion. And it is not even all. Diesel engines need fewer tenders, meaning less crew, and because diesel has higher energy density and does not need large amounts of fresh water, less infrastructure for fuel along the way would be needed, greatly reducing cost. The last advantage of liquid fuel for diesel engines that would come to be important later on, and especially today, is that liquid fuel can be pumped in, either from land, but more importantly also from another ship. This completely eliminates the need to stop for fuel, and it is extremely important in modern shipping, as ships can now be supplied at sea, only needing to stop for cargo. These were the very important improvements that were heralded in by the Zealandia. A sister ship, Fionia, would also be built by Burmeister and Wayne in Copenhagen, and a third, Jutlandia, would be built using the Danish design by Scottish Barclay, Curl and Company. The three ships were named after the Latin names for the Danish regions, the island Sealand and Funen, and the peninsula Jutland. These three ships were the start, but many more engine ships would follow due to the advantages. Zealandia was also a quite luxurious ship, as it was also built to bring passengers to Siam, and as the diesel engines had saved both weight and room, there was ample opportunity for extravagance. It had 21st class cabins, and the lesser cabins had toilets and baths for every two cabins. Servant rooms were arranged in connection with the first class cabins, so all in all, a nice way to journey to Bangkok. East Asiatic Company's main route was to Bangkok in Siam, now Thailand, as the Danish company had received trade concessions from the Thai government that wanted to trade with a European nation that was too small to pose a colonial threat to Thailand. This gave East Asiatic Company an economic strength to experiment with engine ships and as neither the company nor Denmark had the series of ports with fuel along the way, being less dependent on many fuel stops made sense. 
Zelandia was visited by Winston Churchill as First Lord of the Admiralty when visiting London during her maiden voyage. The ship was noted for only burning 600 tons of fuel on the journey from Copenhagen to Bangkok, which was a great feat, showcasing its superiority to steamships. Zelandia would sail for the East Asiatic Company for 24 years until she was sold to Panama in 1936 and renamed. She would be chartered to a Japanese company and was wrecked at Omaisaki, Japan, in 1942, thus ending her tenure at sea. The legacy of Zelandia is that she ushered in the age of motor ships and the end of steamships, simply because diesel engines had so many advantages. It took a long time for steamships to be phased out, but all in all, their tenure at sea became short and Zelandia ushered in the age of the modern engine ships that run global trade today.